Hey everybody, it's Brian House here for Housework and today we're going to be talking about the hardware that you need when you build your platen and it's the hardware that goes around these these rollers and this can be your tracking uh, wheel like one of these or it can mean these uh, little two inch aluminum wheels here that we've got uh, bolted up to the Revolution 2x72 laser cut steel platen. Uh, these are some older wheels that I've gotten from Origin Blade Maker out in Oregon, and they're uh, still going strong. They've got lots and lots and lots of hours on them, and they do really good. Um, I took these off of my old platen, and then I started playing around with some of these I've got uh, from KnifeGrinderParts.com. They're just two-inch standard wheels. They had like a deal where you buy the wheels and the tracking wheel, and I think it was about $120 shipped to my shop here. And uh, I'll, I'll put a link down to their website. They did a great job getting this to me quick. Uh, they're out in Utah, so thanks guys, I appreciate that. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, I just uh, buy from them. So um, what I really wanna talk about is how these are actually bolted up, because when you buy these wheels, you're, you're not buying a complete set. You're buying just the aluminum wheels and they have the bearing on the inside. It's up to you to find the bolts and the pieces that make this all work. And recently I just got an email from somebody who was having a really hard time um, getting these uh, on his um, grinder, which uh, isn't a Revolution 272, it's just um, his own grinder. He couldn't figure out how to get these to sit uh, right without binding the bearing. And it is a little bit of a mystery. I mean, it, it makes sense that this would be tough to achieve. And there's one thing that you need to make this happen. Uh, these are like little tiny spacers that go in between the bearing and the bolt and the washer here. These are just brass and some people don't use brass. You can get them in uh, plastic like these here. These are just some straight up plastic ones. These are a little bit thinner and then they make like a, a, a PVC version of this which is uh, this one's a little bit thicker. This is a nylon spacer. You can get these at Ace Hardware. The key to this is that they the interior diameter is about a half inch. Okay. And if that, that fits on there nice and snug, but it has room to turn, and it will, but it won't push up against the bearing itself, meaning it's going to sit on the bearing, but it's not going to ride on the outer part of the bearing. It's going to push up against, but not stop this from turning, this wheel here from turning. And what, what that does is, is it keeps the whole thing from binding when you tighten it up. Now... If you tighten it too much, if you were to take a wrench and tighten this down, it would slow the wheel down. It would um, stop this from being able to spin freely. So there's a little bit of play that you need to have in there. It's kind of a gentle balance you need to play with before you get this on there because you're going to have two problems. If you don't do it like this, you're going to get a lot of bearing noise. And then the bearings are going to also create a lot of friction. The belt's going to create a lot of friction on this because it's not going to want to spin freely which is gonna generate heat, and that heat will warp your belts and then destroy your bearings over time, um, and then sometimes rather quickly. So I went on McMaster Car's website and I looked up these little spacers, and I really like these guys. I don't know what I pay for them, but they're, they're not cheap, but they're not too expensive either. I think a 10 pack was like eight or $10 for these. So I feel like for less than a buck, you get really good protection and it slides on. The, the, real, the clearances are real nice and you get a nice clean fit, as you can see. So it, it, it sits on there real nice. Now, what I did for my setup here, as you can see, I've got a couple of washers in there, okay? And that what that does is it creates a real nice, big, thick, flat surface for everything to sit on and it's spaced out really nice and perfect in there. And then the final piece is this lock washer. So let me assemble it for you so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So we've got our half inch bolt. This is a half inch uh, diameter bolt. You slide your, uh, in this case, we're gonna actually slide the washer 
on first. So it gives this nice big flat surface. And I'm gonna slide down my, my brass piece. And then there goes my wheel. And because I wanna protect my bearing, I've got my, my brass bearing there. And then one final washer. And then we're gonna secure it all down to whatever we're bolting it to using another washer. So if you can imagine, it's going through here, going through this plate like this, washer, and then lock bolt, locking nut. Okay, and when you tighten this down, You can start to feel it snug up, okay? And you can feel here, there's no wiggle. I mean, I got no room for this thing to move, okay? And I went right into a straight hole, not tapped, just a hole right through the platen, not tapped. And this thing is solid in there. And the wheel can spin, not quite freely, but it can spin and it feels good and loose. This one's a little looser up here, all right? So you can see that is how simple you can do this. You can build this yourself. I will include links down in the description for all of these different pieces. Uh, the nylon spacer, which is the white guy. This is PVC, the black ones. And then also the super cool, super fancy brass ones from McMaster Car. I get them all from McMaster and they're my preferred vendor for those. And then also these really nice, big, thick washers. These are one inch outer diameter and half inch inner diameter uh, washers. So it's really that simple. And if you're binding your bearings, it means you're tightening everything up. And most likely you're not using a locking nut on the end. I think that's really important here. Make sure you use this locking nut. And that way when it's tight, it, it'll, it'll remain tight and never vibrate off. You don't have to lock this system down too tight to where it's gonna uh, bind up your bearings there. So this is kind of cool looking actually. Gives me some ideas. I might, might design a rotary platen in the near future. If you've got any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section. I will do my best to answer them. As always, if you got something out of today's video, Make sure you hit that thumbs up button and if you're not already subscribed hit that subscribe button and if you hit that little bell you'll get a notification every time i upload something to youtube there are many ways you can support my channel there's my amazon store there's my teespring store there's my website where you can buy some parts and pieces and plans for my 2x72 belt grinder and those are all great ways to support my channel and everything i have going on in here as always, guys, I hope to see you on the next video. My name is Brian House, and this has been Housework. Uh -huh.